Hello, I'm Chris Funk at the Newport Folk Festival. This is Chris Thiele joining me. How are you, Chris? I'm good. Welcome back. It's good to see Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it is so good to be here. Awesome. Amazing set today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us and making time for this. I know you have to run off and play some more music like you do. Um, I <laughs> as is my want. As is your want. As is your want. Especially, it is my want, actually. Um, I wanted to ask you if there's somebody in your life that was um, instrumental in your, yeah, that was terrible, in, uh, <laughs> oh, it was the mandolin. <laughs> That, uh, that when you were growing up that was an educator that you can think back to that um, was uh, somebody that really stick, sticks out in your mind right now. Absolutely. There, yeah. So when you say that, there's, there are two people. Okay, that, please that, do. That, and I was studying with them simultaneously at um, Murray State University. They're in the southwestern uh, corner of Kentucky. I went for a year and a half, All after right. which I, I, I dropped out like a Scalawag and <laughs> moved, <laughs> moved to Nashville and started doing session stuff and seemed to work and out. And then, uh, then my band Nickel Creek kind of took off, and so no more college. Um, but for those three semesters, um, Dr. Stephen Brown and Dr. John Steffa, okay, who were in the music department at at Murray State. Um, Dr. Brown taught theory, okay, uh, um, um, amongst many other things, and Dr. Steffa taught composition, okay, and. I came in there, you know, feeling like, feel like I knew what I was doing. Like right. I, I, I'm a musician already. I have made records. Right. And those two men had, um, one, had such command of the subjects that they were teaching, um, but then also had the patience to deal with me coming in there like I knew everything about music. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Despite the fact that I knew nothing and <laughs> know nothing about music. It's just like anything else, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And they, um, th for one, they helped me see that gently. Right. Um, uh, and and b gently but firmly helped me uh, take a step back from myself right. and start listening to music in a whole new and far less self-absorbed way. I remember going into a composition lesson with Dr. Steffa with, with a thing that I was very happy with and he said that's, that's really nice and also it's done already. Oh. Like there is nothing else that you could do with this thing. It's circular, it repeats in on itself, because I was, I had no idea, but I was exclusively writing in fiddle tune form. Like, right. here's an A part, and that one, that repeats, and then you go to the B part, and that repeats, and actually, the A part doesn't even need the B part. The right. B part is superfluous in terms of, like, whether it's required by the material that precedes it. Right. And he was like, if you want to start, because I was starting to listen, to music that was a little bit more formally rig rigorous at that right, point. Sure. And I was emulating just the surface of it, but still with that same repetitive form that I had Underneath grown up playing. I had yeah. no yeah. idea. Uh, it, it was like that David Foster Wallace thing where the two, the two young fish yeah. swim in there sure. and the old fish swims by and mm -hmm. says, hey boys, how's the water? Right, right. And say, what the hell is water? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what uh, Dr. Steffa and Dr. Brown did for me. It was like, hey, amazing. take a step back and check out all this water around you. That's amazing. <laughs> they could identify that and have the patience too, right? That's a great idea. The educator. patience was so, was so key because I came in, you know, cocky and, and, um, and confident. And, and, and with really... Dexterity, I would Yeah, faci yeah. had facility to burn and good yeah. ears and... Um, and they, they helped me. Oh God, I remember Dr. Brown say, telling me a story. Now, now I realize how uh, pointed it was. But right. the way that he told it to me, it was as to, it was as a colleague, like right. that we were colleagues. And he was telling me about, oh yes, Chris, I just got back from judging a piano competition. And there were these two, there were these two musicians there, they were both so excellent, and of course it's silly to have to choose 
won to win this prize. Right. One of them was was so was such a a beautiful player. Every note in its right place. So much facility. Absolutely gorgeous command of the instrument. And then the other one, maybe a little bit less command, but but such a extraordinarily generous musicality. Right. The piece just seemed to come alive under her fingers. And do you know who we decided to give the prize to? And and of course I I knew what the right answer was. Yeah. And I knew that I needed to start working on things a little bit differently. Right, right, right. That's amazing. And it was such a short time that you were with them too. It's incredible. Yeah, just a year Space and a half. A teaching. massive, a massive impact on me. That's awesome. Well, speaking of teaching part of these videos, we're um, talking about some techniques and whatnot. Chris Steely coming in here, I'm like, wow, where do I start? <laughs> Chris Funk, the guitar player for the Decemberist, amateur mandolinist. Um, but one thing I've noticed in your playing or while watching you play, mm. Um, and this is going to sound quite odd, folks, is your pinky. And um, <laughs> I, when I play the mandolin, I don't even use the pinky. Mm. And I feel like you, you know, have playing this instrument for such a long time, you're like, why should I not use the pinky? Not right. beyond like playing chords. Right, right. And I wonder, if, am I onto something here? Can you speak to I, that? I do. I feel like it is a... Um, it's it's a shame not to use it, seeing as it's okay, there. Excellent. You know, it, it is there, and um, when we have it, I mean, so these are the two. These fingers are, um, these are the money fingers. This is not a, a this, is, this a, is not a finger of distinction. This is no, no, and and it really wants to. Do you know what? Actually, I I feel like this is the dumb finger. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I actually feel like this is the dumb finger, and it's way, th this is actually a very useful finger that is being, whose usefulness is being obscured. Okay. Or be, being sort of dragged down by this one. So, so we need, I think when we start thinking about the pinky finger, okay. we really need to also start thinking about this finger. We need to back up to the ring finger. This finger is being propped up by these two. Okay. And this finger doesn't have the benefit as much of the benefit of these two fingers I as see. this one does. Right. This one is hogging all of these two fingers' strength and and, in de and kind of natural independence. They're so good at doing things separately. Sure. And then you get this one going on. This is the one that just can't. Like, right. It doesn't want to function by itself. Right. And um, this one, I think, does okay, but this one is just tagging along. It's big. It's like the... Have you considered I don't having like it removed? Or? You know... <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. No, it's also, I mean, we need to use it and we know we need to use it. And okay. we don't, I think my point being that it is actually a problem finger as well that yeah. we forget to work on as such. Okay. Because we, we know this one is. Right. Um, but this one, and this one doesn't feel as much like a problem because it's really tagging along with these two. Got it. And, and so, I mean, one thing to take a look at is playing, uh, is, is, is playing anything with, and, and do not allow yourself to use these two fingers. Oh Lord. So like. Wow, yeah. You know that, so that you can, you know, get, cause these two by themselves can, you know. There's a lot that they can do. No, no batting practice required here. No. But but these guys, I think it's just a, it's a good exercise to try and only use those two. Sure. <laughs> but that's and and again, <laughs> Dr. Brown would want me to say uh, that of course. Any extra facility that we gain, we want to use in the service of good music making and not flashy music making. Right. <laughs> so, but you feel like working these two alone, that they become part of, um, I would assume at this point, you're not thinking about which finger is going to come next, but they become part of the subconscious and the, the linear lines that run through your soul from wherever they come from mm. at this point, right? So you've armed them to perform for you, the performer, right? Right. So then they become part of your vernacular. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, I'm constantly thinking about technique. 
um, in terms of eliminating obstructions between my um, my imagination yeah. and uh, and your ears. <laughs> so right. I I want to try and get I want to try and make sure that that what I imagine is not being corrupted by mm -hmm. what I can play. Right. Uh, I want I want to be able to play whatever I can imagine. Right. And and so but also to use always remember that that is the aim of technique is to be simply able to realize what you can imagine. And and I think we often forget as musicians to work on that part, on this and this of like, can we, it's all well and good for us to be able to move our fingers well. Yeah. Um, but it does no one any good if we can't imagine vibrantly sure. and uniquely, like if we're not actually able to imagine things that are not there yet. That's what practice, a, a lot of our practice should be wrapped up in improving our imaginations. Right, unleashing the, possibi the possibilities of what could be there. Totally, and then it is really helpful if you have your pinky ready to go for, <laughs> for whatever you might be able to imagine. Thanks for wrapping <laughs> that up for me. Awesome, this has been Chris Thiele, I'm Chris Funk. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris.